Hi everyone, it's Autumn here from the Santa Barbara Girls Inc. Center, and I was wondering if you have ever thought about being president. Okay, maybe you haven't thought about being president. If you have, good for you. But maybe you've tried at something that was really hard or something that you didn't think you could do. Today, we're going to be reading about a really strong character who wanted to be president. And even though she wasn't sure she could do it, she tried extra hard because of it. And well, you'll see what happens. Today we're reading Grace for President. Pay attention to what Grace does during her campaign. Pay attention to the ways that Grace is strong and also pay attention to what she does differently than Thomas, her opponent. Before we read, let's talk about how states vote. Imagine your Girls Inc. Center is the United States and they're throwing an ice cream party. Everybody takes a vote on which ice cream flavor they want at the party. If this were the US, they would be voting on things like the president and laws. Now, imagine that every class is a state Science class has nine students, and the art class has three students. Only one student from each class gets to be the representative. That means they're the ones who tell Girls Inc. what the popular flavor in their class was. Do you think it would be fair if the art class with three students counted the same as the science class with nine? No way. We can count and see that eight students want chocolate and only four want vanilla. To make it fair, the student representing science class gets three votes and the student representing art class gets one because there are three times as many students. It might seem kind of complicated, especially having to go through and count everybody in the rooms. That's called the census and we do it every 10 years. But it's really important because it makes sure that every single person's vote counts. Grace for President by Kelly DiPuccio. Pictures by Liu Yan Pham. One Monday morning in September, Mrs. Barrington rolled out a big poster with all the president's pictures on it. Grace Campbell could not believe her eyes. Where are the girls? That is a very good question, said Mrs. Barrington. The truth is, our country has never had a woman president. No girl president ever? Grace asked. No, I'm afraid not, said Mrs. Barrington. Grace sat at her desk and stewed. No girls? Who'd ever heard of such a crazy thing? Finally, she raised her hand. Yes, Grace? I've been thinking it over, and I'd like to be president. Several students in the class laughed. Well, I think that's a star-spangled idea, Grace, said Mrs. Barrington. In fact, we can have our own election right here at Woodrow Wilson Elementary. The snickering in the room stopped. Grace smiled. Would anyone else like to run for president? Mrs. Barrington asked the class. Nobody raised their hand. Becoming president was going to be easy, Grace thought. The next day, Mrs. Barrington made an announcement. In the name of democracy, I have invited Mr. Waller's class to join our election. Their class has nominated Thomas Cobb to be their presidential candidate. Grace's heart sank. Thomas was the school spelling bee champion. His experiments always took a blue ribbon at the science fair, and he was captain of the soccer team. Becoming president wasn't going to be so easy after all, Grace thought. The teachers put the names of all 50 states and the District of Columbia into a hat. Everyone except for Grace and Thomas got to choose a state. I'm Texas, said Anthony. I'm New Hampshire, said Rose. I'm Michigan, said Robbie. What does the number 16 mean? 
Each state is assigned a number of electoral votes. That number is determined by how many people live in that state, said Mrs. Barrington. Each of you will be a representative for your state. Altogether, our country has 538 electoral votes, Mr. Waller explained. On election day, the candidate who receives 270 electoral votes or more wins the election. Why 270? asked Rose. That's more than half of all the electoral votes, Mr. Waller said. Becoming president really wasn't going to be so easy, Grace thought. Grace came up with a campaign slogan. Make history! Vote Grace Campbell for president. Thomas came up with his own campaign slogan. Vote for Thomas Cobb, the best man for the job. Grace listened to what issues were important to the students, and she made a list of campaign promises. A peaceful school, no bullies. A cleaner school, no littering. Better hot lunches. No more fish stick tacos. Thomas made up his own list of promises. Free tutoring, free soccer lessons, fish stick tacos every week. Grace made campaign posters and buttons. Thomas made posters and buttons too. Each week, the teachers set aside time for the candidates to meet with their constituents. Polls were taken. Voters were making their choices. Grace continued to campaign. At recess, she gave speeches. During lunch, she handed out free cupcakes. After school, she held rallies. Meanwhile, Thomas wasn't worried. He had cleverly calculated that the boys held slightly more electoral votes than the girls. At recess, Thomas studied his spelling words. During lunch, he worked on his latest science experiment. After school, he played soccer. Even before the election, Grace made good on her promises. She joined the safety squad. She organized a school beautification committee. And she volunteered her time in the school cafeteria. In early November, Woodrow Wilson Elementary hosted a special Election Day assembly. Grace and Thomas took their places on stage as the school band began to play. Henry was the first representative to approach the microphone. The Yellow Hammer State of Alabama casts its nine electoral votes for Thomas Cobb. Fletcher said, The last frontier state of Alaska casts its three electoral votes for the best man for the job. Thomas Cobb. Hannah called out, The Grand Canyon State of Arizona cast its 11 electoral votes for Grace Campbell. And so it went. State after state after state cast their electoral votes. The scoreboard in the gymnasium kept track of the totals. The voting demonstration was quickly coming to an end. Clara approached the podium. The Badger State of Wisconsin casts its 10 votes for my best friend, Grace Campbell. Grace looked at the scoreboard. Thomas had 268 electoral votes. She had 267. There was only one state still unaccounted for. Wyoming. Thomas grinned. Grace felt sick. Sam walked up to the microphone. He looked at Thomas. He looked at Grace. He looked down at Grace's handmade flag. Sam didn't say a word. What are you waiting for? Thomas whispered. The band stopped playing. All eyes were on Wyoming. Finally, Sam cleared his throat. <clears> throat> The Equality State of Wyoming casts its three electoral votes for Grace Campbell. 
The gymnasium erupted in loud cheers and a few boos. Mrs. Barrington approached the podium. With 270 electoral votes, the winner is Grace Campbell. Thomas looked stunned. Grace hugged Sam. Why did you do it? She asked. Sam handed Grace his flag. Because, he said, I thought you were the best person for the job. The following week, students in Mrs. Barrington's class were preparing for their career day presentations. Grace volunteered to go first. She stood at the front of the room and glanced at the poster still hanging on the wall. My name is Grace Campbell, and when I grow up, I'm going to be President of the United States. This time, everyone believed that she would. What did Grace do differently than Thomas that made her the best person for the job? Have you ever been in a situation where you thought that maybe you couldn't do something and worked extra hard and were even better for it? Now it's your turn. Make a campaign poster for yourself as president. Try to include things that you think make a really good leader. How would you get people to vote for you? What types of things would you offer people? What would be the important things that you wanted to change? Bye.